distinguished. I know it was a little bit difficult to, to believe, wasn't it, really? Um, actually, when I became an, an ADE, um, there were only 30 of us in the UK. Most of them were, were in uh, America, uh, and it has certainly grown in, in the past 10 years. Um, there are actually two sessions that you've had with me. Uh, and the first one we're going to look at actually specifically at transforming the learning space. Um, I put that up there. Um, if you do follow Twitter, um, note the underscore. Uh, I don't tweet my lunch, no matter how good it is. I retweet um, useful links, anything to do with, with teaching, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and not exclusively to, to Apple and the iPad. I just like to emphasise I'm not an Apple employee. Um, I just happen to use Apple products quite a bit, and that's my email. Please feel free to, to contact me uh, in any capacity whatsoever. Um, I, I don't always put that up, but I put it up having spoken to some of you today, because um, those are the countries that I have uh, taught in or lectured in or given presentations or workshops in, and hopefully you'll see um, your space there. Um, Forty of them which have been in the last two years, which have been interesting. So the learning space, that I'm going to talk about, that's kind of one representation of it, and of course schools don't have them, but more and more we see this kind of model happening, um, and it doesn't really matter that those pictures are primary, the fact that the iPad is just sat on the desk, being picked up as and when uh, it's required, and when Phil emailed me, um, I've, I've done a lot of work with that Manchester actually, particularly Manchester Medical School, and said, I've seen a couple of your sessions, I, I'd, like, I'd like the delegates um, to see some of those processes. I immediately thought of some of the things that I could show you that have got a lot of wow attached to them. And the more I thought about it, I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to go to a number of strategies that I want you to actually experience today. I think they've got wow attached to them, if you like. But one of the problems, and one of the things that concern educators most about the adoption of this technology is that quite often it's implemented in schools with very little planning. I've taught for five years in primary. I was trying primary trained as a music specialist. And I moved on to secondary. Mainly because I was told, you know, you can't move to secondary, you're a primary teacher. I thought, why not? Pedagogy is pedagogy, surely. And I moved into that for seven years, and then into FE. In England, we, we separate 16 to 18, it's called further education, and I did that for eight and a half years. Um, anybody teach an FE here? Further education at all? In England? None of you, wise move. And then I did four and a half years at higher education, um, as I, I became I majored in um, music technology. And I was amazed at the number of times new technology would come forward. And as educators, we were asked to embrace it or consider it or look at it or use it. But the underlying planning, I hate to say it, was actually non existent. Please do not, if any of this resonates with any of you. And actually, the amount of time that I or my colleagues spent <coughs> with manuals, yes, people are nodding now, hours, manuals, time spent to make sure I could go into the lecturing or the teaching space adequately prepared, because I didn't want to make a fool of myself, I didn't want it to fail. So a lot of institutions don't seem to take note of something I put together. It's very, very basic and very, very obvious. And that is, I believe, there is a, a set of essential core applications that can be used right across the board to make the mobile device effective. Now, I'm using this terminology where I would normally say iPad, because a number of you have Android devices, and a lot of institutions, particularly in higher education in the UK, feel that they can't be prescriptive about the learning device. So I've come up with a number of cross-platform strategies. What I will do, and I urge you in a minute to pick up an iPad, I will point out the difference between iPad and Android. And I don't mean um, 
I don't mean in this way. I've got this old diagram here. I'll just put this up. Do any of you remember those? You're all far too young. But that perfectly represents a number of things that happen in education. For a start, schools either use BBC Bs. Anybody remember those? Yeah. Or Spectrum. How many remember? How many have, do you remember the spectrum? Okay, let's be really nerdy. How many of you still have one? <laughs> Only person, yeah. Somebody was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna put my hand up. I, and, and mine still works. But the point is, these two systems were completely exclusive. They didn't work together at all. Another parallel would be, um, I think we used to have called VHS. Okay. But did anybody in the room buy Betamax? Yep. Okay. Betamax was better. It was a far better platform. The quality was far better. Unfortunately, the world bought VHS. And that's something we always seem to suffer from in education. Two platforms. And now we have four platforms, really, don't we? We have Android, we have Apple, we have Mac, and we have PC. And there's that whole decision about which one you should use. Going back to this strategy here. There are a, core, a number of core applications, and I'm going to show you those. You're going to, you're, 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 you're experience them hands-on. Um, I think that is the iPad's biggest advantage. It's not that there aren't integrated workflows on Android, and it's not that they're not improving. They are. But one of the things that Apple is criticized for is that they like to control every part of this process. It's a closed network. It's a closed system. But actually, as you'll see, when it comes to education, do I really always want you searching for a document through a hard drive, as opposed to going, there's a document, and getting on with what I want you to do? <coughs> on top of that, there are those. And there are some amazing subject specialist ones, particularly for science. Some which will show you the ion 3D, some which will simulate various um, eye defects actually within with actually using the lens and then there are those and you're going to see a couple of those tomorrow um, Ian's going to be showing you Nearpod which can take your lecture space into a whole new dimension and then a presentation on augmented reality running alongside that Apple introduced iTunes U do, do any of you use iTunes U by the way just a few. Well, it's a very easy way of just delivering your course material straight to your student's iPad. Yeah. Think VME, think Moodle, and then think 10 times easier. Would that be a fair? Yeah. 10 times easier than using your VME. So, let's start with that. I hope you've got, have you, have the people picked up the iPads yet? Yeah. yeah. You've all got them? If you don't mind switching on the device, and having an iPad, and um, I've spoken to a few people already who said, yep, I have an iPad, I, I use it for email, email, Facebook, and browsing. Um, a couple of you are laughing. It's not, well, I'm quite concerned when I see or hear that story when it's a deployment of iPads in a school. Shall, shall, shall we change that? I'm going to start with this because um, the most challenging students I have taught it wasn't that funny um, <clears throat> were at Manchester Medical ambitious hard-working extremely academic and I would be showing them certain strategies and I would get yeah, that's really useful. No, seeing that, what's next? Literally. Very demanding. And I said, okay, do you know what? I'd like to ask you some questions. What has been the most useful aspect of the iPad? And there it is. Not a specific app. And I said, well, can you tell me what you're doing with it? We photograph everything. Because it's instant, it's immediate, and we Time is the most essential thing. And we video lots, each other and ourselves. And we get together and we show and we share the videos that we make. And actually being able to see yourself on placement, 
That was a real shock to them. I said, well, what was shocking about it? Well, I had my head down on the keyboard taking notes about the patient, and I wasn't engaging the patient as I'm trying to do now with you. I'm scanning you the whole time to see if there's any, you know, how many of you are on Facebook, how many of you are listening, etc., etc. And they said that was the biggest eye-opener, seeing how they related to a patient. So let's start there. Um, pick up the iPad or our iPad or steal one off your neighbor. And if you're new to this, I want you to just get comfortable with swiping, okay? The camera tends to always be on the home screen. And if you're not sure what is the home screen, there's only one button on the front. Big, big button at the bottom. Push that, it'll always return you to home. That's why that's called the home screen. <laughs> at the top there, I've got one. Um, my, my, my camera icon is there. What I'd like you to do is just tap on that, if you don't mind. And I want to point out that we have different orientations of shapes. Just literally tap on photo, make sure you're there. And if you'll notice something about my iPad, it's not been pointed out already. My iPad is wirelessly mirroring, it's called. It's mirroring to the projector at the back. And the way that's happening is that it's connected to an Apple TV. It could be an Apple TV, it could be a piece of software called Air Server, Reflections. Your PC that's connected to your projector in your lecture space can run a piece of software for literally $10. And your iPad can share its screen with your PC. And your PC is connected to the projector. Well, so many lecturers and teachers have said, this transforms the, 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 the teaching space. Because I can walk around, keeping away from speakers and feedback, and interact with students, and it, you know what it's like. Not only that, but I have this mobile camera, which is extremely effective. From literally saying, well, that's a great piece of work, or have a look at the student's notes, or whatever. In addition, I mean, I have my own network, by the way, but we could connect any of your iPads in an instant to that screen, and I'll show you how that's done later. If you think about that, if the students produce something, whether it be notes, taking a video, or an image from a placement, that's instantly shared with the group. We call that one aspect of flipping the classroom, and I like that a lot. And we'll use that model a little bit as we, as we go forward, okay? So within this, you also notice that you've got, at the top right there, it moves between the front and back camera. I'd just like you to play with the device, okay? I know it's a bit of a shock on a Tuesday morning, which certainly is for me. I was up at 4 a.m. just to make sure I was here. Keep Phil happy. Yeah, nice and early. Um, but rotate it so that the home button is at the bottom, and that's the correct orientation for the selfie. And I'm going to use the term selfie with good reason. Please do this. Please try it out. Because this is a generation that is used to taking pictures and videos of themselves. So why can't we use it in the teaching space? Obviously, you have to set the context. Please record yourself summarizing the notes of X, because you're going to use them or bring them to the next session. Does that, does that make sense? What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to play with your camera. I'd like you to switch it from photo to video and see the difference. If I now hit that red button, I'm going to get a video. You can see the video started because the seconds are now counting. And I've just taken a seven second video. Back to photos, and I'm just going to take a picture of the group. And what I want you to do, if you don't mind, I know this is basics, but seeing as some of you are saying you're not using your iPads, you're going to see a, a whole progression in a minute. I want you to right now, and you may get up and cause mayhem, take five pictures. But after that, I want you to move that to video. So you can actually tap on the word video, and I want you to find someone you do not know. I want you to ask that person, how far they've traveled for this conference, and what their particular 
interest is. Okay? So I literally want 10 second video. Be prepared, they're going to interview you back, and we're going to have all of five minutes doing that, okay? Sure, just, ah. quick, 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 quick. Just, to, just to say, sorry. On the, um, on the, on, on the iPads, we. One, do you want this one? No, oh, this one's good. Just say on the iPads, we distributed. The camera actually was disabled for teaching confidentiality reasons, but it's currently being pushed to the mall now through the network, so it might take uh, a, a few minutes to reach you for the camera. Okay. Any other restrict restrict restrictions I should know about? I don't know, any more, I think that's, that's it. That's camera, yeah. just the most useful app. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> it'll, be with, it'll be with you soon. Sir, for what? Okay, just hit cancel for that. So you've got cancel? Just cancel. cancel. You see the word cancel on that little box? Yep, just cancel. Can I just say something about this then? Just so you know what's happening. Ian here, he has an account which manages the iPads that are being lent out. It's called NDM, Mobile Device Management. What it actually allows you to do with your institution is control things. In this case, it was a camera, but it can actually push apps out. Now, that's really important, because if you have 30 students coming to Lecture X, and you want them to have App Y, Ian can push that out. I'm sure we've all had the, the feeling when you've got somewhere, and the students have all different devices, which they have different experiences, some better than others, which is highly undesirable. Okay? You've just pushed that back out again, have you, Ian? I've just switched on. So your device will now, the camera will actually kick in. If it doesn't, I mean, I think we've got about 90% that, that will. But could you do those two things? Five pictures, interview with the person, you've got five minutes. I don't know, it's saving them now and pushing, so... I'm waiting. I've got one of yours, I've got one of the chat. <laughs> That's cheating. But where did you come from? Well you don't tell me. Oh no, he's not yeah. Especially with this technology, he's pushing ahead with that. All of his students have on <laughs> oh, go, go, go ahead. I feel I feel awful with the gap. Right, where are you? Chatting with you. Okay, you need to... Your video's going, you stop it. Now you hit that one. And point it in my direction. Oh, sorry, sorry, I thought... I don't turn around. There you go. Um... I work in education, I work with Apple products, pretty much. What else would you like to know? What's my what? Trump. Um, using mobile devices to enhance the learning space. Can I come up? Yes, yes. I look better than that. Yeah, I can do the one here. So, Carol, no, I don't, but you do. So, Carol, how far have you travelled today? Two miles. And did you stay overnight? You didn't stay at the Okay. And what is your speciality? Thank you very much. Watch that 
Okay, we seem to be coming to a, a natural break there. Some more videoing still going on. So, if you don't mind just briefly uh, having a think about what was going on there and comparing it to where we've been. For a start, you were using a camera. And within the process of taking that video, taking those pictures, you should have found it pretty intuitive, i.e. you just kept tapping on that white dot. At no stage did the iPad throw up a menu, save image, name image, where would you like to put it, drive C, program files, documents, images, and then three weeks later you can't find it. Has anybody ever saved a Word doc? And then two weeks later, spent 20 minutes looking for the thing. And that's why we litter our desktop with files, because we know it's got to be on the desktop somewhere. But regardless of whether it was video or image, all of those were going into the, into the camera roll. Photos, that one at the top there. And it'll be the same experience pretty much on, on the Android if you're using your Android device. Yeah. Um, small thing, and if, if yours, you know, if your iPad isn't doing this, I'll show you where to switch it on. Um, a lot of people use the home button to close applications. Most of us now are closing uh, applications, as I've just done, with all five digits um, literally on the screen, really gently drawing them, to uh, drawing them together. Okay? And that's not just a kind of Apple wow thing, because if I do four fingers, just four fingers gently up the screen, I can now see I was in the camera, previously I was in photos, there was the clock, previously I was in notes, there's the keynote I was on, and if I want to jump back to the keynote, I literally just tap on it, and it will zoom to fill the screen, I'm, I'm now back in that application. And being able to do that from an application, you know, four fingers uh, to either switch an application off, etc. When you see a four-year-old doing that and presenting, one, it's quite intimidating, and two, you get the idea of the device hopefully becoming as intuitive as possible. But let's take this a step further. You've just taken some photos. You'll see up here, top right there, I've got uh, my notes. I'll put a little board around it so you can see what I'm talking about. Do you mind just opening up the notes application? These are all native applications, okay? I just want to illustrate a couple of things. If you use that icon on the top right, you see it's like a little pen, you can take notes in here, okay? So you've taken some pictures, you've taken a video, you're making notes. And one of the things I want to point out is that, as it stands right now, with my iPad, with my Bluetooth here switched on, you'll see my Bluetooth is on, my, my wireless is on, under that word airdrop, you see that word airdrop? I've got the word everyone selected. Now, I'm just going to 
clarify for a couple of people who may be looking at that. And if you're wondering where that menu came from, by the way, you should have asked me. If I did it too quickly, slow me down. If I put my finger here at the bottom of the screen and just drag it up gently, we call that control center. And the reason why I'm showing you this quite early on, I just want to show you some of the working strategies of using the iPad. First of all, if you have an iPad 2, Carol, you have an iPad 2. You can tell you have an iPad 2 because it has a 30 pin wide slot at the bottom. You won't see AirDrop. It's only on the newer iPads that have that, okay? Okay, only the new iPad, iPads have that. And I'm tapping on everyone. And what that allows me to do is something really important. I can literally share any kind of document, image, video, note, Word document, PowerPoint, you name it, with no Wi-Fi. All by Bluetooth. All these minis, all these iPad minis are perfect for it. Absolutely ideal. Really small, just as powerful as the larger iPads. And my teaching set, I, I use iPad minis, because they're wonderful. While I'm here, I can see the Apple TV. That's how I connect to it. And what students are doing is they are buying an Apple TV, which is now a very cheap piece of hardware, connecting it to their HD TV. We all know what an HD TV is. It's the one that's got your DVD connected to it, or the PS3 if you've got children in the house, or the Xbox. And they're then getting together. Now, that's somebody trying to take over my Apple TV. <laughs> And they need to put in that passcode to do so. Okay? And I'm, gonna, I'm quite happy for you to do that because when they do take over the passcode, they have to be in the lecture space to do so. Yeah? I, a student can't leave the lecture room. Somebody's doing it, it looks like, uh, yeah, it is an iPad. If you put your name in there, we'll know who you are. There's various people trying to bump each other off. I'll let you see how that works. I can actually set it, in fact, but I have to release it before you can do that. For obvious reasons, we don't want to do this thing what you're doing right now. The passcode, is it really obvious? You have to be in the room to be able to see it. So you can't go outside and think, right, time to mess up his lecture and take over the Apple TV. When this first came out, I was doing a presentation in Turkey, about 300 people, and I was talking about this. Miriam? Where's Miriam? Where is Miriam? Please don't run away, Miriam, because they're quite, quite useful for people to see that somebody else has an iPad up there. Anyway, I was talking about this wonderful thing. It was really early on. We didn't show how to do it, but sure enough, somebody took over my screen. And I said, ah, you see, you can have your students work there. And I took it back over again. And then they did it again, same person. And I then said, well, you know, if you do it again, we're going to have to send security after you. Trying to turn it into a joke. And she did it three times. And then in the interval, I said, um, I, I didn't do anything. She came up to see me and said, that was me messing up your keynote. No, that was me taking over your screen. I said, oh. She said, I've heard about it, but I really wanted to see my, my iPad on screen. <laughs> I said, you did it three times. Anyway, in the interval, we set the two pass things. We put the passcode on, and we locked it so that you couldn't bump me off unless I released it. Okay, so that's Apple TV, which I am now going to tell you I'm going to take over. That person there, would mind releasing it, or he will send Phil out to find you. You should know who you are because if you start typing, there we go, and I'll take it back over. Thank you. So the point about that, it's really easy to use. Control center, Bluetooth, yes? Hi. Uh, it's, I don't think it is on a four, but let me have a quick look. Oh, it's a message from your husband. Can you pick up milk? <laughs> um, I'll have to show you in the, in the interview because it's in a different place on the four. So yes, can I ask you to start behaving? Or <laughs> thank you. Um, no, 
No, you can't. I don't think you can airplay on an iPad 2 either, actually. Okay? So, one thing I wanted to show you from your notes there, if I tap on that... Right, then may I ask you nicely to stop <laughs> playing with Apple TV, and if your colleague is doing it, ask them to behave. I don't really want to have to set um, Ian or Phil after you. Good grief. I know it's exciting. We could just do this all morning, actually. Okay. So, can you take notes? <laughs> I don't think that, do you know what I think? Okay. You know the bit at the bottom? Tap above it, leave the Apple TV alone, step away from the Apple TV. Okay. That was my mistake showing you, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know why, I thought I'd left primary a while ago, there we go. <laughs> Are we happy now? Have a look at your neighbour, would you mind just policing each other and just ask them to switch it off, okay? Right. Got it? Got that out of your system? I think what they may have done, we may have had a little queue of people, yeah. There's one, that was Chimpo and that sounds either Spanish or Italian, yeah. Okay. What you may want to do, see that little green switch, if you have that open, you may want to just switch it off, okay? More fool me, yeah. <laughs> I can do it without Apple TV while you get it out of your systems anyway. Have a look at your notes, open them up. You'll have to tap away from uh, that. Look at the top right hand corner. Can you see a little square with an arrow on it? Yeah? Now that icon, which I want to draw your attention to, it's called the share icon. When I ask people who've never seen it before what they think it might be, they say, is it some sort of export? And it is. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's actually the cleverest thing Apple ever did with their iOS devices. We call it the share icon, and you're going to see it throughout this morning, and you're going to see it in documents, you're going to see it in presentations, you can see it in notes now, and you'll see it in photographs. And basically, it's, to me, the biggest advantage over Android. And I'm not here, by the way, to slay Android. It's a platform that's developing and many people are using it. But it's this that can take a document from one place on your iPad straight into another. It's this that will allow you, a little bit later this morning, to pick up a document from Dropbox and open it into another application. Seamlessly. If you tap on that, please. Yeah? Just tap on that and have a look at what's going on, okay? Okay. So are you all actually looking at that at the moment? And it should look a little bit like that. Can you see what's happening on mine? Now, if the um, iPads are all named the same, they won't show up. So I'm guessing, Ian, that all of your iPads are named the same. No, They'll probably no. just be called iPads. But I can see uh, They're all numbered. somebody's iPhone. Oh, I think that's perfect. I can see um, May's. I can see, it looks like Ellie. Can you see that happening? And the reason why I'm showing this is that I've no idea what the Wi Fi situation is in your institution. But I can make a guess. Some institutions are going, people are smiling about that. Um, some institutions have got 200 megabyte broadband piped in. Some institutions have got very unreliable uh, Wi-Fi or intermittent. So uh, I do a lot of um, teaching and lecturing in South Africa. And at times, it literally disappears for two hours, even in a school that's paying for really tremendous uh, Wi-Fi being pumped into the school. Anybody from South Africa here? Oh, great. Cape Town, Johannesburg, Johannesburg. So uh, literally, nothing, or a power cut. Is that fair to say? So you're not going to have Wi-Fi. But here, any of you that can see my iPad, 
and now I'm opening up myself for abuse again. Can anybody see Joe Air 2? Yeah, if you tap on that, please do, tap on it, nothing, nothing bad will happen. Just tap on Joe Air 2, and that will show you that your students can share their notes with no Wi-Fi, all by, all by Bluetooth. You're all too scared to do it now after the Apple TV. Thank you, and I'm accepting these notes. Can you see I'm getting three, four, five of them? Blah, blah, that one's uh, quite um, iPad strategies. Quite, um, yeah, I agree. Can you listen first? Can you? I don't know. Can you see? And the reason the notes are all going into the right place is that notes, one particular file type associated with the notes app. And notice how quickly this is happening. Is that what he said? If you pop into photos, you'll see the same thing. And that is really important. If that's an image that a student has taken, I can now decline, by the way, you've missed that one. <laughs> now, I can send that picture out, and once this is populated, as you'll see, literally as I start typing, tapping on all of those, that's going to appear on people's devices. Because it's an image, it will just go into the photos. And that's what I like. All I want to be concerned with is, is the content, content of the photo information that I need? Because I don't want to have to spend time, save images, etc. Uh, so no, I'm sorry, you've, you've missed that boat already. You declined that picture, how could you? It's a nice picture. <laughs> Thank you. And the reason I'm showing you that, I've sent that out to about eight, between eight and 10 iPads, literally just by tapping on them. I'm not, dependent on the internet. And this is one of my favorite discussions. Mobile devices are no good without the internet. Why? Well, uh, we, we want to search Google. Well, as far as I was aware, my teaching went fine, even when I was without the internet previously 20, 15, 20 years ago. Is this gonna be a difficult question? Yeah. Yes. And I feel very lonely in my eyes. Yeah. Because I told him that you were antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> and to control your iPad. So, okay. We, we, how's that? Better. Um, I'll explain. Bluetooth is actually it's quite a primitive technology. And you will find occasionally that devices get confused. Hold the sleep wake button down for about five seconds until it says switch off, yeah. switch off your iPad fully, switch it back on again, and that will rectify that. And I know it sounds like an old adage, switch off, switch on again, but actually with Bluetooth, that is the answer. But it, it wasn't personal, I promise you. Um, notice we could, do, we could actually share a video or a photo, okay? So your devices are not bound to be using the internet. Okay. Question. Yes, please. So you want to send one picture to everyone that's in the room. Yes. Would you have to tap to each of those individuals? You would, but I wouldn't do it that way. That's about to come in about five minutes. What I, what's that great for is literally students between themselves peer to peer quite quickly. I can do it that way, for example, if you have X picture or an, a URL, and I say, can you just send that to me? No complication, no technical um, kind of processes to go through. It's a nice, quick, immediate thing. So, what I'd like you to do now, I'm going to ask you to look for an application, and I would say that within HE, within probably your teaching subject. This is probably the most effective application, okay? To do it, and if you don't mind, I will have that Apple TV back, because I need it for this bit. And I'm just gonna show you a slide, if I'm allowed to, okay? And show you probably one of the most controversial teaching devices in the last 15 years, okay?
Just keep looking at the picture, ignore the numbers. <laughs> Whilst it was on the screen, could you see what that was? Uh, could you tell me what it was? Interactive whiteboard, whiteboard, smart board. And how many do you use them? Or have them? How many of you have them? That's a better description. Okay. I mean, at one point in the UK, it had to be one of these in every classroom and every lecture theatre, okay? Controversial? Well, can we agree on a couple of things? Two to three thousand pounds or two to three thousand euros per go. Is that correct? That's not controversial, it just means you need more money. Great idea, you interact with them, you can record what you're doing, you can interact with images, you can annotate them. Nothing controversial in that. Generally, only one person at a time can use them. Again, nothing that controversial. We've been doing it for years. Teacher at the front or student can come to the front and, and use them. Although I know plenty of students that would rather die than walk 20 feet to the front of a lecture theatre. <laughs> Understandable. It's quite daunting, isn't it? The controversy is when I ask teachers or lecturers how many of them put their hand up to using it effectively or properly. And aside from Turkey, it's always overwhelmingly, I use my Mac projector, I don't use it properly. In Turkey, they are absolute whiteboard ninjas. They have absolutely, you go there, they use them amazingly, seriously. That's the controversy because we're spending so much money for what's basically a projector. Surely that's got to be wrong. So the app I want you to find is called Explain Everything. Now before you go searching like this, here's another little tip for you to use on the iPad. If you put your finger in between the rows, not at the top, not at the bottom, and just gently flick it down, and then start typing in, it'll come up. And you can do that on any screen, and I'd like you to find that. It is on iPhone uh, as well, but it's a wonderful app. Please do find it on your um, on, on the iPad we've lent you. Okay? This app also exists on Android. Okay? So we have device compatibility. And what it gives you, if you look at the screen, top left hand corner, you should see a plus symbol, which should kind of suggest to you new project. Tap on the first one because it's a whiteboard, and you can immediately just start writing. You just tap on the pen. If you tap and hold on the pen, you'll find you've got selection of pen thicknesses. I like a nice big fat one. Below that, if I tap on that one and hold it, I've got annotations, I've got arrows, etc. So the arrow is quite useful. There's an A, and of course if your iPad is set into this would be Dutch. Turkish, etc., etc., and the iPad is up to about 50 languages. If you tap on the text there, you'll see that for French, anybody from France here? France? Monsieur? I've got a C with a Sevilla. So if I want to have for threat there, I have all the additional character set. I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to type in French. Yeah, and what we have here is a text tool, okay. but what I want you to really notice, and I, are you all trying this out? You all seem to be pretty much doing it. If you're not, we just check everybody's notes. A few people just not able to find it. Go just okay. Just make sure. Does anybody need any help finding? Do you anybody need help finding it? Yeah. Please give us a shout because I will zoom over. There's a, a camera there, but I can no, I can get one. It's an app that has to be bought. It's about two, three euros. And at Manchester Medical, they pushed it out to every student. Okay. 
Okay, you don't need one. This one is shoot just do it. Okay. Ah, because you don't have it. Right. Okay. Yes. Well, can can we lend you one? Is that your own iPad? I'm going to lend you one. Just like Christmas, I just clip my finger. I'm going to get an iPad. Thank you, Ian. And you are, if it asks you to access your camera or your microphone, say yes. So you have a whiteboard, and um, sorry, um, Phil's colleague over here from Australia just asked me the question is this a free app? This is actually pretty certain it's the only paid app I put on the list. $1.99. And, I mean, seriously, when you see where we're going to go with this, yeah? um, can you see the little green plus symbol there? I'd ask you to stop for a second, please. Yeah? Can you see the first folder? Existing photo. So if you get a little prompt as you do this and it says, may I access your photos, the answer is yes. May I access your microphone? The answer is yes. And I'll show you why. Because just now, the images that you were taking, I should be looking at my camera roll, there we go. There's the image I just took. I can resize it. I can, if I wish, cut out. Yeah? Don't panic. I'm just illustrating one, how easy this technology is. Two, I'm now bringing in an image. And I'm asked at this point, from this point forward, can you put the context of what I'm doing relative or relevant for you? If you're lecturing eyes or hearts or whatever, that's what that image would be, not this image of this wonderful group, okay? So I have an interactive whiteboard in my hand, okay? This next thing, say again. Okay, so you have got here. And I'll ask you to bring in an image. Just gonna check your images, okay? Onto the screen, okay? Done. Done. You switched your photos off when I fixed that now. That should be fine. If you can't see your photos, do give me a shout and I will fix it for you. It just means you said no to it accessing your photos. Okay? Okay. Um, can I ask you to watch this a little bit? I mean, my screen's looking pretty, pretty messy. And when I do this, um, you won't be able to hear my voice because the Apple TV is only connected to the projector, not to speakers. But you'll get the idea. Can you watch, please? If I hit the red button at the bottom, can you guess what's going to happen? Right. So not only is it recording my voice, but anything I decide to annotate. So you're now using an interactive whiteboard, recording your voice, explaining the concept, and if I now hit stop, which is the pause button there, if I hit that little pause button there, please note this icon here. Third from the right, because that will export that movie to my camera roll. Now in the first part, I ask you to video each other. Now that video in the teaching space would be explain your understanding of X. In your own words, what would be the prognosis or the diagnosis of why? Now I'm teaching a concept. But now I flip it over. Now, of course, in here it's going to be no no noisy. But I would say bring to the next lecture your own movie that you've created using this content and explain blood flow of why, the process of this, the diagnosis of that. The context you can set for yourself. But honestly, there is no subject on this earth that cannot be enhanced by using this tool. 
And the great thing is that you've all got it, as opposed to those three children lining up at the whiteboard in my diagram. You know those three children. The one at the front was happy. He had the pen. The second boy was like, give me the pen. I just got the pen. Now you've all got the pen. And I then say to you, bring it to the next lecture, the next seminar, and then, and don't do this now, okay? Don't do this. <laughs> then you would theoretically take over the Apple TV, theoretically, and we'll watch your movies. And I'll come to that in a minute, because it will be noisy in here. That's why I ask students to do this at home, where they've got time to prepare it, to do it properly. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Please, hit record. If you can't hear yourself speak, by the way, you know, when you play it back, at the side, just like your phone, there are some volume controls. You just need to pump that up when you play it back, okay? Just three or four minutes, try it out. And if you're stuck, please ask me for, for some help. That's what I'm here for. Okay, have you all tried to export that movie as well? When you've been playing? I'll run through that process again. We've got a couple of people who want to share their videos, as you can see there. Um, I'd like to put this um, exercise a bit more in context, if you don't mind. Okay. In this case, it's, it's completely um, kind of abstract. I've said, just go and create a movie, record yourself talking. You wouldn't do that. I'll tell you what, whoever that is, can you stop there? Who is that? Well, you must not recognize your iPad. Who is that? Because it looks great to me. Actively dad, it says at the top, looking at the images. Nobody wants to own up. It's okay, I'm, I'm, thank you. Can you just, um, 
Tap away from that. Tap away from the... So that will actually put that menu away. Tap above it. Are you okay there? <laughs> okay. I was going to use that basically as a demonstration and ask them to take that in. When you were asking your students to do that, you would actually set them some criteria, wouldn't you? I want you to explain this, 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 and this, and bring the movie to the next session. Now, one of the things that lecturers say to me with this example I've given you is, do you think I'm going to watch 30 movies, 40 movies? And my answer is, no, I, I wouldn't expect you to, actually. What about this model instead? How about you come to the next session and I ask you to Bluetooth your movie to your neighbor? In the old days, we used to call that swap your books. <laughs> and then I give you a criteria for assessing and giving peer-to-peer -peer feedback. It might be something like, have they used the correct terms and there are 10 terms to be included? Honestly, I'm not moving. Yeah? I really will ask you, please, especially at the back, can you leave the Apple TV alone and can we change the setting at break time? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> because obviously I have a group I can't be trusted. So, if I give you a criteria for assessing each other's movies, have they included the correct terms? Uh, second, does it seem to make sense? Diagram. Did they draw the diagram themselves or did they just take it off the internet? And give the overall students a feedback rating. Eventually, you see what actually comes up next, isn't it? When the students do that, they're doing two things. One, they're having to go back over the criteria to mark, if you like, look at the other student's work. Agreed? That means in the back of their minds, they'll also be thinking, does mine meet the mark? And then I'll ask you as a group, overall, give it a rating. A star rating out of five. Can anybody put their hand up and say that they actually mark the student next to them as a five? Now, when I get a couple of fives, what do you think I'll do to do with those? Yeah, I'll show them to the whole screen. And it's an interesting thing about students. The rest of the students are going to be sitting there going, I want to know why that's a five and mine's not a five. And then some of them are going, I can see why that's a five and why mine's not a five. And what we might be doing with it is we might actually stick it on the VLE, or what I'm about to do with you next, okay? So you should be kind of getting used to... Thank you, that's me. Can we leave me back on there? Searching for applications, okay? I want you to find what I consider my next essential application. You've had it explain everything. It's there on the right. Right in the middle, bang in the middle of the screen, is an application called Shobi. And this application will work from iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad, Android, PC, and Mac. But I would prefer, for now, that you all do it from iPad. And I'd like you all to do it. Please don't sign up, don't do anything, don't pass go, do nothing. I'd like you to do it from iPad, you'll see why. Will you please open the application? I'm going to sign out. You should have that. And I want to explain what it is first of all, okay? A few minutes ago, a lady here said to me, so if you wanted to distribute a document to your students, and there were 30 of them, would you go into AirDrop and tap on all 30 names? No. I would use this, and I would use this for several, several reasons. One, it's free. It's limitless, limitless file storage. It's a great way for students to back up their work. 
It's a paperless management system where I can drop any kind of file to you in an instant. You can then access that anywhere, anytime, but we have to have Wi-Fi. Now imagine this scenario. Let's imagine the Wi-Fi was really bad, but just good enough that I could use it, or I could use it from home. I might drop all the documents to you and ask you to access those documents from home, Starbucks, McDonald's. I actually moved a teaching session to McDonald's once because the Wi-Fi was atrocious and we thought, you know what, let's go and have a coffee. And you know, McDonald's have got the best Wi-Fi, so we went there, it was free. The students loved it. So let me show you how it works. For this, you're going to pretend to be a student today, okay? Some of you, it's not difficult to imagine the way you've been behaving with the uh, Apple TV. You're going to sign up for free. Okay, I'll step you through this. Sign up for free. You are a student, okay? I'm a student. And I want you for today to sign up with the username. Note, you could sign up with Google, but please don't. Please, please don't. Because if you use your Google credentials, you won't be able to use them for the teacher account if you decide to use this later, okay? Also, it points towards that Shobi is heavily integrated with Dropbox and the whole Google framework, Google Drive, etc. okay? So please sign up with the username, and I want you to put in your proper first name and your proper second name. Is this okay? Now, can I just stop you there for a second? Do not put in your email for the same reason I just told you about Google Mail. If you put your email there, you cannot use it for the, uh, for the teacher account. The username and password, totally up to you. If I was to use this as a username, that's just not going to work. Because globally, Joe is a, I hate to say it, it's a pretty common name. And Joe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, probably hasn't been taken. You need to make up your own username, make up your own password, and please, may I have your proper first name and your proper second name? The only time I've really had lecturers mess about with it is at HE. I've had Homer Simpson, Mickey Mouse, Einstein, Seymour Butts, hilarious. Seymour Butts, you get it right. I don't know who I am looking at you. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I think we know where I was looking. So, sign up. Okay. And sign up. And if you, if that name has been taken, yeah, that means because I've probably done that before. <coughs> yeah, that will probably be completely unique. Yeah. I just got to memorize that. Um, in memorizing it, I'm going to show you how I quickly memorize stuff. Home button and sleep wake button at the same time. I've just taken a screenshot of that. So on an iPad, it's very easy to take a screenshot of anything. A diagram in an app, a web page, it's the home button there, and the sleep wake at the top. Those two together, the screen will flash. It takes a little bit of practice, because if you push the home button, too early, it closes the app. If you push the sleep wake button too early, it puts the iPad to sleep. It's both at the same time. Okay, and then tap sign up. And we'll soon see how the, the Wi Fi is pretty good actually. And you should be at that part there, yeah? If you are there, and then thank you for the gentleman nodding at the back because this is a very lonely place. And I just don't know if it's actually getting that far to the back. If you see the word skip there, skip that. Just totally skip that, and you're now in Shobi. Okay, and I just need to check how we're doing for time. Good grief. Just running away. Okay, so this now is going to allow me to communicate with you wherever you are, wherever you have internet. Now, students generally never straight too far from those, and Shobi exists on both of those. iPhone, 
and Android. So if you have students on placement, this is the answer. You ready? I hope I've built this up enough. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sign out because I need to sign in as a teacher and actually set up a class. And I'm going to do this completely without the aid of a safety net in front of you. I'll show you how easy it is, okay? So, all my classes that I teach in the week will be populated as long as I can get to an iPad and sign in. And what you'll see is the internet catches up in a second. All of my classes will stream and show themselves up on the left. Okay? So each of your different classes you deliver in the week, this is how to set one up, okay? I hit the spanner and I create a new class. You can't do that, you're a student, you will be joining my class, okay? So I'm going to call this class IACLE, so it's the class of 2015. Is that okay? And the code there, I'm going to ask, do we have a pen there, Ian? I'm going to ask Ian to scribble it on that board. I'll leave it up there for a second. You can't join that class yet because I haven't pressed say BQT, UQT, BQT 54, BQT, BQT 54, I can remember it, I'm not quite gone yet. So tap on the plus and type in BQT 54, upper or lower case, it doesn't care. Question. Um, the simplest way, do they actually start off all together with you at any point? Do they come together at the beginning? Do it then. That's okay. So the lady was asking, what's the easiest way? Right this second, in my email, I have an email from Shobi. Okay? And it will... <laughs> Uh, they're a Canadian company. They're a, they're a really, really nice company. And I'll tell you why they're nice. They're on Twitter. If you email them, they're one of those companies that email back the same day. So I've got here, and it says, class code, great job. You've just created IACLE 2015. The class code is X. You can just hit forward. That's it. Okay? So, I just created this class, and you're all joining it, and I will scroll down to it. It's alphabetical, so I can usually cope with it. You can see the class code there stays for a while. If I go in there, I now need to create an assignment. So I'm going to call this first assignment, you see there, add it, new assignment. I'm going to call this research, okay? I'm going to ask you to do some research, okay? Do you know what that thing underneath the title research is? Because I tell you, in all my HE teaching, the students certainly don't. Yeah? Do you want to do it today? Yeah, like we put it on the, on the BLE. The final on the assignment sheet? Oh, I thought that was next week. No. Um, so I can change the, the due date for this. I'm going to make the due date today, and I'm going to make it 10 17 16. And here's the thing if you go past that deadline, it doesn't stop you handing the work in, you get a red clock. That's it. If you have a different time zone on your iPad, makes no odds, it's internet time. It will adjust. I know because I've had students try to do it. Underneath it is a pro feature. You will have to pay for a site license for your establishment for that. 
assignment lock means you can set up assignments and the students can't see it until you unlock it. That's called preparation. Okay, so I will hit save. Please watch this, okay? Because you're going to see... Oh, I, I locked it. Okay, great. I'll just pop into there and unlock it. Uh, BQT54. BQT54. I want you to see what happens. You actually physically tap on the name of the class, tap on the name of the assignment, and what you're going to see happens here, uh, some of you are still logging on, I can see it slowing up the internet, but it doesn't matter. Because when it populates, you're going to see all the student names. And at the top, the shared folder. Now let's just check these names, because I did ask you to be good. Okay. What about this name, Philip Morgan? We've all been good, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I was going to be facetious, Bill, about your name, but I'm, I'm going to behave. Okay. Um, they have, actually. Now, here's the whole aspect of this. If I tap on shared folder, you'll see that I have a plus symbol there, top right. So, do you. If you were to go into your Lenovo, Vio, MacBook Air to showbe.com and log in with the same credentials, you'll get the same student experience without the plus. So you'll see my messages, you'll get my documents, and you'll be able to send me documents by using attach, like Facebook. But you won't be able to do this. All the iPad users, all of you get this which makes it really easy for me to lecture. Well, what do we do when we lecture? We do exactly what I'm doing now. I'm trying to engage you. I'm changing where I'm stepping around. I'm trying to vary my, my voice. And then I might actually write on a board, or I might have some information here. Do you know when you write on your whiteboard with your pens, invariably you'll end up wiping it off? Before you do, all you have to do is tap on the camera, go to the notes that you've made, take that picture, and you'll see use photo. And from this point, I can crop it, I can rotate it, and then when I hit done, that has just gone to every student that has joined my class in seconds. All those words of wisdom that you've been scribbling and all the diagrams you've drawn, now they're there forever. Would you, we'll, we'll see actually how, I'm going to ask you for the moment not to um, go and look at that because you will slow the Wi-Fi up. So we're just going to use this as an illustration. It's going to take long enough as it is. And if I do that at each point of the lecture, I've ensured that those students have those notes. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to show you just what the other tools are as well. Okay? Photo library, is that pretty obvious? It's going to go to my photo library. If I go to comment, you'll find this very useful. It's just a text message, but now we can use this. As long as you're connected in some way to a data network or to the internet, I can use Siri. And you will find that Siri is actually quite accurate these days, and it works in many, many languages. And that note has gone off to everybody, and I may have used that to say, please visit this URL. So if I was to put in a URL, that is now dynamic. Literally, when that note goes there, you tap on it, and if you're not seeing these messages yet because your device isn't refreshing, all you do is put your finger on that list and pull it down. So tap on the class. You sounding what? Oh, perfect. 
Perfect. We've got a great example here in a nice way, Janice. You can have multiple teachers on the same account. So if I go back the way here and show you class members, it's pulling down the list, so please be patient. We have two scenarios here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of you didn't listen to my instructions. <laughs> but I want you, because you signed up as a teacher, now please consider what, might this, what this might mean. Do you notice they're all in red? That's because the teacher that created the class has not approved you. Because if there was not this safety procedure in place, what's to stop any student signing up to show me with a teacher account, getting the code and seeing all the other students work? Because it would then become as useless as Dropbox as a shared area for work. I use Dropbox all the time, but I don't share it with students. Why? We tried it. All these students were uploading work and they could view each other's work. Worse still, they could delete each other's work. So I had students saying, well, I handed it in. Somebody must have deleted it. Have another day, then. Upload it again. Useless for that, unless you created a whole series of permissions. So this, do we know this gentleman? <laughs> because if we don't, I will block him. <laughs> block him. Where is he? Oh, <laughs> popular. <laughs> and what happens if that? Uh, if I if I hit approve, he's got totally total access to the class, just the same as myself, and can drop in on work, make comments, etc. And um, I, I need to do this just because um, these people won't have access to this. I'll, I'll do I'll do this during the break. But I do want to. I did want you to see that because many times we will have shared shared classes, and, and it's very powerful to be able to do that. Okay, um, I will I will approve all of those during 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 the break. I just want to show you that you are all, are all look, you are all now picking up that comment, but um, I want you to to have a look at this scenario here. Okay, let's have a look at um, Guillermo Carilla. Hiya. Yeah. So. Uh, it is, but have a look at this now. Any interactions that I do are only going to be one-to-one -one with him. So I'm now able to differentiate for his needs, totally. And I can give you feedback, and I can do it in a variety of ways. I can drop a document to you, etc. But this one is just wonderful. Hi. Um, missed you at the last lecture, uh, two lectures in a row, a little bit concerned because they're key lectures and if there's a problem, please do come in and see me, okay? So I can do something like that, hopefully here with my tone of voice, that I do care what happens, I do want him to come and see me. Um, what I'm going to do on that save, I'm just going to select uh, this student here, with Bonnie. Okay, because I know Bonnie can take it. Okay, so I'm going to select Bonnie's and I would give a slightly different message, maybe um, a little bit more in this way. Hi Bonnie, I've had a quick look at that draft that you dropped into Shobi. I'll be honest with you, it, the, the research, you've literally looked at the first two websites. Um, it's knowing near the, the work that you're capable of and I'm really quite concerned. Can you book in for a, se a seminar with me on your own? Um, and uh, we need to have a look at that. So the difference there is I can send in an instant. Now, I mentioned there draft, you know, a draft document. One of the things that we talk about in education all the time is the journey is more important rather than the arrival. We've been using this for years. Yet, we're set up on a system via Turnitin that only works on deadlines. 
unless you set up a series of seminars where you meet with those students and say, okay, can I see your initial research? Can I see the first draft of the essay? Can I see just before you hand it in? What I'm going to show you in part two, because you have that look about you that says you need to drink and coffee and stuff. <laughs> what I'm going to show you is that you can submit work to me from anywhere, and I might ask you for four stages of your work. Initial research, first draft, second draft, and final. And I can see each stage of it. And for the first time, I can see whether all of it's done in the last three days, the last two days, or the last 24 hours. Because all of these interactions are date stamped. Time stamped. Yeah? You've earned break time. I'll see you after the break. Okay? Thank you.